I believe you were asking in, in each of the in each of the films, minor storylines are dropped, and how does that how is that done in six? Yeah. Well, I think we have fewer of the memories in six than are in the book, which um, <coughs> in some ways is is, is 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 a drag because I love those memories, and actually in each of the films we, we lose things that I love. For example, spew um, is something that I love in the books but isn't in the film. Um, what we decided to do, and this really began in the third film with Alphonse Cuaron, is try and make the films more cinematic, but to acknowledge the separation between book and film. They're different mediums, and need to, you can't simply translate a book, you have to adapt it. And Alfonso was very, um, I mean, Chris did it brilliantly, but Alfonso really took it. And, 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 and the way he did that was by telling the story from Harry's point of view. And things that didn't relate to that tend to fall out. In this film, that's very much the case, um, too. Um, and you know, the most significant drop, I suppose, is, is, is some of the memories. Largely because Voldemort never appears in the film as a nemesis. So you're setting up Seven, and you're, 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 you're investigating a character who, as I say, while the shadow is cast over the, over the film, doesn't really appear. You know, it's interesting, and I won't give anything away, but there's a major difference uh, in the climactic scene. Uh, from the books, a major difference. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to. But you know, I, I, without giving it away, w one of the reasons why we made that decision, and this is going to sound, you know, now you're really confused, but <laughs> is that it relied more on character. Oh, I, sure. uh, we won't say another thing. You'll now talk some more about that after, because I, I think that's very interesting. Um, yes. I have no idea, no, I mean, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, we haven't yet cast that section, so, and Tom will be in the, in the end, but we haven't, he may want to cast his girlfriend, um, he does, okay, good, well, I'll keep that in mind, um, uh, oh, sorry, the question was, Tom Felton has a, has a girlfriend called Jane, um, who works in the stunt department, and um, he wants her to play his wife, girlfriend, in the, in the, in the end, in the end of Harry Potter, Seven Part Two, which is what they call it. Great title. Um, yeah, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part Two. Um, and she's asking if, if that's going to happen. And nobody's been cast yet. In that regard. We have an interview with him on uh, the Hero Complex on Wednesday. We have an interview today um, uh, with Michael Gambon. So if you guys can check it out, we've got a story every day for a month on our Harry Potter countdown, you can check them all out, interviews with everybody. You don't believe a word that Michael Gambon said. <laughs> Terrific. Let's take another question. Uh, you had a question right in front. Um, you talked about uh, like Warner Brothers doing like compilations and stuff, yeah. and I'm wondering about. Um, I know that there's a lot of pet themes because you'll release promotional things. And one in particular was um, when you talked about like the Marauder cast. I think there was some shots of like the, the young Lily and stuff, and there must have been like some scene between her confronting the young James. And I'm, and that wasn't on the DVD extras, and I'm wondering if things like that are. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll come up with all sorts of things. One of the things I do know will be on the uh, Ultimate Collector's Edition Part One. Uh, will be the uh, of, of Part One of the of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, as it's called here. Um, I think it's on that one. Um, will be the audition tapes for Harry, Ron, and Hermione, which will be pretty cool. I looked, I, I looked at that the other day, and it was it was amazing because, uh, and I showed it to Rose, you know, to my wife, and. And you know you fairly recognise Dan, Rupert, or Emma. I mean, particularly Dan for me. It was, wow, who is this boy? Um, uh, I think I'm not sure that we're doing it in the fifth DVD, but we may have the audition tape audition between. Um, uh, we will have an audition with Luna on one of them, because Luna was uh, Ivana Lynch was. What happened was we went through an intense casting period to find Luna Lovegood, and we had um, we. Or, we ended up with two or three people. And we saw them, we felt, you know, they were good, but they'd be acting the part as opposed to being Luna. So we did a casting, um, an open call, and we expected a thousand people. And I think somewhere between 12 and 15,000 people showed up. And you know, all sorts of people, 35 year old men. <laughs> said I was sorry. <laughs> anyway, so um, we have um, Luna's, not the one from that, Casting, but her, her audition team with Dan, and we have Jesse Cave who plays, um, who's, in, who's in the new film, 
um, who's uh, Lavender Brown, and she's fantastic. And her her di her her audition with Rupert, which was uh, some of which was improvised, and was fantastic. Fantastic. And we have some video, I understand, uh, to show you guys. We're, they're going to set that up. We'll take a couple more questions, but you guys just let me know when that's ready. We'll do that. Unless you guys don't want to see it. Anybody want to see it? <laughs> I know. I don't know why I do things like that either. Okay. Uh, here. How you doing? Hi. Um, Rupert Grant said that uh, to get the audition for the role, he sent in a video of him rapping. I was just wondering if you ever saw that video. And she's saying that Rupert said that he sent in a, an audition tape of himself um, to get the part of, of Ron, and yes, he, I did, and you know, he's amazing. Um, Rupert is a true original. I mean, he is he's really unique and eccentric. Um, and, he, and he's gone through a really interesting journey, because on the first film, he was the most talkative. Um, Dan was quite shy, but well, when they got the part, there was a press conference, Dan was almost in, sh in, in shock looking at all the press. Rupert was talking, he was asked how much he got, he's getting paid. And this kid who was 10 years old said, I don't know how much I'm getting paid in, in, in mother money, but I, I, I could tell you in nuts and galleons. <laughs> I know, that was, that was pretty good for a 10 year old, or 11 year old. Um, but he's a true eccentric, he, he owns, um, what's he done with his money? He's, um, he, 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 he plays the didgeridoo, and he's bought an ice cream truck, <laughs> and he's bought a hovercraft, um, and he's really an original. And he is one of the. He is completely unchanged. He comes from a large family like the Grints, like sorry, like like the Weasleys, <laughs> and um, lots of brothers and sisters. And he is completely unchanged and is very funny and really sweet. 